Hey y'all, it's Tanner here with Thrust Flight, and today we're going to learn how to chair fly. So the first thing I want to uh, talk with you all about is when is chair flying effective? When can I start chair flying? And the answer, honestly, is not right away. Right? I want to make sure that I know what I'm doing, that I've been in the aircraft a little bit. Otherwise, how can I practice something that I'm, I haven't performed for real the first time? Now, there is definitely some thought that you could put into something. For instance, once you get more into maneuvers, uh, maybe your performance takeoffs and landings as a private pilot, those I can chair fly in certain ways before I've ever done them in the plane. But if I'm on day one, day two, maybe even week one of my private pilot training, I don't have enough knowledge really of being in the aircraft and knowing where everything is and how those processes work, how my specific school or my specific instructor wants me to run these flows or checklists or how my hands and feet move to fly the airplane. So all I would be doing at that point is practicing incorrectly. So generally what I say for when is chair flying most effective is after we've done whatever move, maneuver you're trying to chair fly. So for most of the time this is going to be maybe just after that first lesson. So we've gone up and done some straight and level. We've gone up and done our first takeoff and landing. Now I can start chair flying. But even just taxiing on the ground, while it is effective to chair fly, it's not really anything that you necessarily need to start immediately. So there's a balance between waiting too far to start. I don't want to wait till I'm almost check ride ready to start chair flying. But if I start chair flying right off the bat, it's not going to do me as much good either because all I'm going to do is ingrain those improper habits, you know, all the wrong movements and stuff that I haven't quite mastered yet on the ground. So what do you need to start chair flying? Well, you might think you need a chair and in most cases that's correct, but really all you need is you. If you have a chair, great, that makes it more comfortable. The goal with chair flying is we want it to be as close to an actual flight as possible, which means maybe some long stints of doing absolutely nothing. It could get a little boring, right? But that's what we want. We want to be able to demonstrate, especially if we're doing a chair fly all the way from pre-flight to post-flight kind of stuff. We want to make sure that we're going to be comfortable during that because we will to some extent be comfortable in the aircraft. Again, there are all kinds of extras that we can use. We can have printout posters of our cockpit so that we know exactly where to kind of look for that stuff. I can have just a picture of the cockpit pulled up on my iPad, on my computer screen, on my iPhone, something like that, that I would be able to look at and kind of reference so that I, especially if I'm a new pilot, I know where I'm looking for these things so that I can kind of move my hands, move my eyes around to match where I'm going to look in the cockpit for these buttons, switches, knobs, the controls, those kind of things. But really, again, chair flying is meant to be a, a, just an extremely cheap, easy to use alternative to real flying whenever you can. So if I'm sitting, waiting for something, sitting in the doctor's office, I'm gonna chair fly a little bit. Maybe I won't say everything out loud, but I'll kind of mouth it around a little bit. Maybe I'm waiting in the airport for another flight. Well, I'll chair fly a little bit. Maybe I'm at home watching TV. Well, now I can chair fly. It's just designed to be done wherever you can in order to keep those pairs skills alive. Now, if I'm going to sit down and have a, a specific study session for chair flying, as opposed to just kind of, again, keeping those skills fresh, I might want to be able to set myself off in a quiet area to do it so that I really can talk out loud. And it'd almost be like practicing a musical instrument at that point. I'm going to lock myself in a room. I'm going to take away all my distractions, unless we talk about this a little bit later, that I might want some distractions in there to help me focus. But for the most part, it's just going to be isolate yourself. And that way you can take as much time and as much volume as you need to talk out loud about the these different components. All right, so let's talk a little bit about some best practices. Number one that I'm gonna say is don't overfly. And this kind of goes back to what I was talking about at the beginning of the video. If we practice too much, but it's the wrong way, I'm not giving myself any feedback. Maybe I haven't done this maneuver very much. There's a difference between, okay, I just need to refresh myself on the maneuvers guide and I'm going to practice and practice and practice and practice so that I absolutely nail this. Because no matter how much you practice in chair flying, it's never going to be flying an airplane. You still have to get behind the, uh, the yoke there and do some actual work. Um, but the most part is, you know, we can get it to a, a point where now now I've got most of the mo movements kind of ingrained in myself before I get into the aircraft, but I'm not necessarily going to have all the control pressures down or exactly how it feels or how the aircraft might move. In general, it's going to be a little busier in the plane than anything you could do chair flying because if I'm chair flying, I can fake turbulence as much as I want and try to counteract that with my feet and my hands, but until you get in the plane, you're not going to really know what that feels like. So again, there is a happy medium between just chair flying all the time and chair flying none of the time, and you generally want to shoot exactly halfway in between that. 
So another good practice is to talk out loud, and I mentioned this a little while ago, but it really is important to say these things out loud. Even in an airline environment, you're going to have call-outs. You're going to be talking out loud because it goes into CRM, your crew resource management. We are not mind readers as, as much as many pilots would have you think so. We want to make sure that anyone else in that airplane is knowing what you're doing, not because they have such faith that you're an incredible pilot, but because you've told them what you're doing actually with language, with your voice. So you want to get into that habit in chair flying. The other thing that talking out loud or talking through these procedures out loud and reading your checklist as you're running it is that if you hear your own voice saying something out loud, you're more likely to catch yourself when you do something incorrectly. And so it really helps complete the feedback loop with yourself so that you can hear when you're making these mistakes and stop and correct or retry something to make sure that you don't make those mistakes going forward. Move around, right? That's another thing we want to do. Aside from talking out loud, this should be a little embarrassing. If you're chair flying correctly, locked in a room in your own home, you should feel uncomfortable were you to do it in a public space. You're going to be looking like a mime. You're going to be saying all these things out loud that no one else is going to understand, and then you'll get that wink from a pilot somewhere, and you'll go, yeah, I know you're a pilot, right? So if I'm going to chair fly something, let's say I take off, I'm going to hold my hands out in front of me, just like I'm, I'm actually flying the airplane. I'm not going to rest on the armrests, I'm going to keep my hands up, right? I'm going to move my throttle forward, right? I'm going to be looking outside, I'm going to be pointing just like I would at my engine instruments, and then I'm going to slowly rotate back. I'm going to say my rotate speeds, I'm going to walk through all of my checklists out loud again, and it looks just kind of odd, right? I'm going to go over here, I'm going to push some buttons, I'm going to go up here, I'm going to push some buttons, right? And it really should be these large movements as if you were actually in the cockpit of the aircraft. So not only is this a mental game of knowing where all this stuff is, right? But part of that mental aspect is moving your eyes to where those points would be and moving your hands physically where those points would be in the airplane so that again, half of it is now muscle memory when you get in the aircraft and there's so much else going on. Now I only have to use one brain cell instead of two to do half of these things. This is a technique used a lot with uh, public speakers or folks that uh, may be talking from the camera a lot, um, and it's record yourself. So if you really are trying to give yourself some good critiques on your chair flying, again, set up your iPhone over in a corner and do some recordings of yourself when you're chair flying. Don't show it to anyone because you're going to look like a nut, but it's good for yourself so that you can say, oh man, it, that took me a lot longer than I thought it did to run this checklist. Man, I look really weird when I'm doing this and not in a good way. You know, maybe I wasn't sure where this button is. And it's so much easier because then you're able to critique yourself from that third person perspective. You're able to critique yourself in real time after you've watched that video. You can really see how much delay there is between maybe you thinking of something and when you actually do it. And speaking Speaking of distractions, the last best practice that I'll give you all here is to distract yourself. Now again, you don't want to do this at the beginning. we got to walk before we can run here a little bit. But in the airplane, there is so much going on and you will get task saturated and you need to make sure that you can handle that. And the more that you are used to kind of multitasking or at least being distracted and being able to peel yourselves away from that distraction and focus back on the task at hand of flying the airplane, the better off you'll be in the cockpit, you know, instead of just being on your chair. So if I'm chair flying and I've got this maneuver down, I know exactly where I'm going to move my hands, where I'm going to look, what my air speeds are, what my RPMs are, all this kind of stuff. Well, now I'm going to turn on a TV show on half volume in the same room and it's going to be talking and I'm going to be distracted and that's exactly what I want. Now let's see if I really have this maneuver down or if I only have this maneuver down in a sterile environment. So now that we've talked about it a little bit, I want to show you an example of how I would chair fly a crosswind landing. So I've got my checklist over here on my phone that I've downloaded from uh, the Thrust Flight website, and I'm going to be using that through this, right? So I've got it zoomed in a little bit here so I can reference it. But again, I'm going to try to treat this as much as I can as a normal flight. That's what's going to get me in the mindset of flying this fake airplane that I have here. I'm going to be pointing at all the switches and knobs and stuff that I would do as I'm doing this. I'm not going to do this as I'm coming back into Addison. There's some extra procedures and stuff that we would have to follow coming in here, talking to approach and such. But I'm going to say I'm just going to do a crosswind landing um, out at another airport. All right, so I'm in the plane here. I already look kind of goofy and that's okay. I've made peace with that, right? And so now I've got my feet on the rudder pedals 
and I've got my hands on the yoke here and that's all I'm gonna do. So we're gonna start off, I'm just flying straight and level, right? Maybe I'm going into the pattern. I'm gonna go ahead and ent enter the pattern here in a minute. So the first thing that I'm gonna wanna do is obtain the weather. So I'm gonna go over here, let's see my PFD is in front of us. So I'm gonna go up here and tune the calm and then I'm gonna swap it over to the other one and I'm gonna be hand flying this the whole time, right? Just so that I have something, I'm kind of resting on the armrest here and I've gotten the weather. Okay, great. I'm gonna land on, let's say, 3-6 today here at our Terrell Airport that we're gonna go practice at. So I've gotten the weather. Uh, I've got next on my checklist is overhead switches all up. So I'm gonna go click, 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 click and make sure all those overhead switches are up. And the Archer again, I'm just gonna kind of run my hand over it to make sure it's there. Then I'm gonna put my other hand on the yoke here and I'm gonna keep flying, right? And then as we, let's see, mixture rich. Okay, great. So now that part of the checklist is complete and I've got in the pattern is gonna be the next one. So now I'm gonna go ahead and key up here and make my call. So Terrell traffic archer thrust 554 uh, we're about four miles to the west uh, we're inbound for a left down 136 terrell great okay cool so now i'm flying it's extremely exciting stuff I'm just waiting until we get a little closer, right? And this is exactly what I want to feel like. I don't want to rush myself because I don't want to do anything that I normally wouldn't do in the airplane because I, I want to get that sense of timing. If I just bash everything out right at exactly as I'm done with the previous thing, if that's not how I'm going to do it in the aircraft, that's not how I'm going to do it. So now I'm going to go ahead and push the nose down just a little bit, reduce some power so that I'm descending for the pattern. Uh, I want to make sure that I'm pushing forward first before I reduce that power so I'm not descending like this. All right, and we're coming into the pattern. Pattern looks clear. It's a great day out here. So Terrell traffic, Archer thrust 554. Uh, we're entering the left downwind 36, Terrell. Okay, so now I'm in the downwind and I'm reducing my power a little bit more to 2100, uh, maybe a little bit more to about 2000 here in the downwind. I'm looking out the left side of the airplane here. Um, you know, I'm gonna fly with one hand because it's a nice smooth day up there. And uh, I'm looking out, okay, I'm coming about a beam, my touchdown point here, so I'm gonna reduce power to about uh, 1700, then I'm gonna push the nose down, I'm gonna add my first notch of flaps here, and then I'm going to go ahead and start my base, and I'm gonna add a little left rudder as I start that base, I'm still looking out of my window here, and Terrell traffic, Archer Thrust 554, left base 36 Terrell. Okay, I'm coming in, making some adjustments here, uh, looking pretty good. Yep, okay, and wings level in the base. I'm gonna go ahead and add my second notch of flaps. And we're about to turn final, and I'm turning final now. Terrell traffic, Archer thrust 554, five, final 36, Terrell. Okay, now I'm kinda rolling out. It's coming in front of me here. And there's the runway. Okay, looks good. I'm making my little adjustments. And again, I'm just making stuff up. I'm using my imagination, right? Maybe I'm a little left of the runway. Maybe I'm a little right, you know? Maybe I'm right on because I'm amazing, right? Okay, I'm on final. I'm gonna go ahead and add my last notch of flaps here. Reduce power just a little bit more. We're going kind of fast. I'm aiming for all intents and purposes. This is a normal landing up until we add the crosswind stuff on it, right? So I'm coming in here, really uh, making sure that I've got the right RPM setting. So I'm gonna do about maybe 72 on short final here so slow down maybe 1600 1500 on the rpm there uh, i've got all my overhead switches up ac is off all that kind of stuff so i've got my fuel quantity uh, we're full tanks fuel selector valve is on the fullest tank we're on left tank that's good seats upright seat belt secure flaps is required autopilot off and air conditioning off and approach heels on the floor so i don't hit those brakes okay we're coming in and okay we're coming into ground effect here i'm looking pretty good i'm going to reduce power just a little bit more but i'm going to keep just a touch in there so that i kind of float and now I'm gonna dip my left wing. As I dip my left wing here, the nose is gonna be off to the side and I don't want that. So I'm gonna step on, on my right rudder here and make sure that that nose keeps pointing down. I'm gonna start flaring. I'm gonna kind of lean back in my seat a little bit so I get that breathing in feeling as I'm pulling back on the yoke here. I'm adding that back pressure. I'm trimming up. I'm back pressure, back pressure, back pressure. And there's my left wheel touch and there's my right wheel touch and there's my, okay, I'm maintaining center line, and there's my nose wheel, power to idle, and I'm just kind of rolling out, rolling out, rolling out. Okay, now I'm on the brakes, and now I'm slowly adding some back pressure as I'm pushing more with my toe brakes, and now we've come to a stop, and I'm gonna get off the runway, and that's it. So, what could I have done better? I could have run my checklist a little bit sooner. I didn't finish the in the pattern checklist until I was on final. So I need to know to do that next time a little sooner. Uh, what else could I have done? Well, it took me a little bit to get my power to idle. I didn't uh, pull my power to idle until I verbalized that my nose wheel had touched. 
And so while my power setting might have been low enough to allow for a landing where I'm not flying with my wheels touching the ground, I've actually landed, it's still that power should have come out a little bit sooner. So at this point, I would take that feedback and I would try that exact same scenario again. And so this is exactly what we're trying to do is uh, we want to make sure that if we just sit down and chair fly a maneuver off the cuff, that it's right all the time, every time. And if it's not, that we are, have the capacity to know what we've done wrong and self-critique so we can improve it the next time around. Well, I hope maybe this has shed some new light on an old topic here. And uh, for those of you just getting into aviation, I hope this has been a good introduction into chair flying. If you have any comments or questions on what we showed you today, leave a comment down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos.